weird in the background of my screen. Oh, that's a old bar you've got there. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I think we're live. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, all right. So um, my name is Barbara Kerr and I'm here with Tegan Webb today to discuss uh, Twine as a tool for writers to uh, extend their writing practice. Before we start, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, certainly Tegan and I are meeting on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I wish to acknowledge them as traditional owners and pay my respects to their elders past and present and elders of other communities who may be listening in. Um, okay, so we were gonna start with how we got into twine. Um, Tegan, you wanna take it away? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I'm, I come from a, mostly a writing kind of straight fiction writing background. Um, so I kind of been, I, I don't even remember how I heard about Twine, but I kind of been like kind of approaching it and then like backing away from it for like <laughs> quite um, uh, a, a little while before I actually kind of sunk my teeth into it, I suppose. Um, I think, yeah, the kind of tipping point for me is I went to this really great exhibition um called contours which was put on uh, by it was curated by um chad toprak and um in conjunction with free play who were really great um and uh it was at the library and it was just this really wonderful exhibition of really personal and very quite narrative driven video games and there was a game there um uh called um oh i can never say by Alana Cole. Yeah, Alana Cole. Yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful, this beautiful twine built interactive narrative game just about like self, it was about self reflection and making choices, but they were, it was basically just about everyday choices. It, it, you had to write on your hands. It was a really great embodiment in it. Yeah. And it featured um, these really great uh, cycling links. So, like options that you could cycle through. As part of the uh, story, and uh, which I have since become, become quite attached to in my own work, um, and that was kind of like a really kind of like tipping point for me, I guess, being like, oh wow, I can be really creative and very like almost like literary, I suppose, um, with this program um, in ways that I hadn't kind of really grasped before. So I basically just sat down in the library i went and sat down at a desk and like started writing um the game that is now which i'm going to show you later which is now young spells which is my first twine game so yeah that's kind of where i started how about yourself okay so i um have been writing ever since i was a tiny child i did that you know your five-year-old makes up a book with staples and draws monsters in it and uh, I've actually been a professional writer pretty much for most of my adult life as well. I've written in advertising, um, I've written for magazines and so on and so forth. And um, I actually didn't get into Twine until it had been out for a couple of years. And my experience with it was in playing quite big budget games which allowed you choice. So um, in these games, which are basically playable movies, they would allow you to side with different factions or flirt with people and do all sorts of cool stuff. And um, But I never dreamed that I could work on something like that because I'm not a coder, I don't particularly love tech. Um, and so I'm just like, oh, wow, isn't it cool that these games have writers and I'm sure they're all very technical and so on. So when Twine became popular-ish, um, I'm like, yeah, cool, I can finally write a game, even if it's only a little one, where I can give people choices and you can take the left cave or the right cave or, you know, fight the monster or argue with the monster and so on and so forth. So um, I made my first Twine about five years ago and it was an extremely silly twine where, because uh, dating sims were getting popular in the West at the time, and I made a, a dating sim where you had to date me. And, <laughs> like, because well, because I think Heart of Boyfriend was released around that time. So, you know, if you can date, you can certainly date me. 
um, yeah, so, and, and from there, I, um, yeah, I've just kept making games and just developing my skills and being able to write more sophisticated twines because that first one, it was just a matter of choose to do this or that. Shall we go to the movies or shall we um, go out to dinner? And, the, and what I've learned since then is to be unafraid of code so that I can do things like put conditions. So, you know, if the person you're flirting with is already interested in you, then they'll be positive. And if not, they'll slap you in the face. And there's also <laughs> my writing is very commercial and genre based, but of course it doesn't have to be. These tools are empowering for anybody, whether they're literary or middle brow or whatever you're doing. Yes, I think that's the kind of thing that we've both really oh, like uh, approached. It is it you don't need to be a coder to use it. That's a really important thing for me. I think it's very accessible. I mean, you still need to have access to a computer and an internet connection, but um, in terms of like a, a starting point for writing any kind of interactive thing it's just such a great way because the code you need is extremely minimal and you can look stuff up you can there's heaps of forums and and open source things that you can use and and um uh just it's yeah you can just kind of it's kind of you can just go for it kind of thing so i think that's something that we're both drawn to for sure and I think also if you're primarily a writer and you're much more interested in the actual writing, uh, you can go as hard as you want or you can go as light as you want. Like if you do want to just use the basics and offer choices or if you don't even want to offer any choices and just want to use CSS to maybe have a day-night cycle, um, you can certainly create those effects and, and have that really enhance your writing. Yeah, totally. I mean, my like I mentioned before, my fa one of my favorite um, kind of, I guess, mechanics in Twine is cycling links. Mm. So links that like cycle through, and yeah. they have absolutely, I've, I've, they get a bit of shade in some Twine forums because they're like they don't have a lot of they don't have any impact on like the outcomes of the story, like the story. But I really love them because they kind of because they have no impact on the story. Or they kind of force you to sit and with the um, choice that you make, decide why you're making it, like kind of think about why you're making it um, and how that kind of impacts, it changes the mood or it changes like the character development, world building, all that kind of stuff that's really important um, but uh, isn't directly impacting the outcome of the story. Um, and, yeah, and... That's quite, I mean, it, of course, it's the one macro that's not built into Twine, too. So I had to, like, go and search it out and find it. Okay. Code for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's just a really simple, great way to kind of make your readers sit and think about the choices that they're making and why they're making them if they have no kind of, well, they, they recontextualize the story, I suppose, but yeah. um, they don't have a, like a you do this so this happens kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can express yourself without being punished later. Or <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, that's actually a really important thing in this sort of, especially for people who are coming more from games than from writing. Um, a lot of choices will punish you um, and you think, oh, you know, I made this innocent choice to sniff a flower and now a dragon's eating me or something. Yeah. You know? Um, like, I'm going to sniff the flower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> one thing for me is that I actually, I've used Twine 2, which is the one that has those cycling links or hooks. Um, I do not much like it because it is a little bit high risk in terms of saving your work. Um, I've had pr professional friends who are like actually make their living as writers complain that they've lost like hours and hours of work because Twine 2 ate it. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I know. Uh, so I tend to use Twine 1.4 point whatever they're up to. So, and that is much, much simpler, but it's also good if you just want to concentrate on the words and choices. So it's very, um, it's very basic. It's very user friendly. Um, so with your permission, I can fire that up and show the audience. Yeah, show it off. Let's get screen sharing. So uh, this is going to get a bit, Tegan Inception, I apologize. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, Tegan, is this working? We can see. Yep, that looks good. Yep. Okay, so this is my game dancing with myself. Uh, once again, this is a dating sim where you date yourself. Um, I This was written for something called Self Care Jam, which was um, initiated in November 2016 as a pretty direct result of the Trump election. Um, and people were encouraged to make games where on the theme of self-care. Um, I was definitely not the only person who submitted a um, game where you just pamper yourself. So if you have a look here, we have a starting, hang on. Uh, All right, so you can see there's a little bit of code. Um, you can link outwards and you can also just start. And um, that's an initial note from myself. And then here's the beginning of the text and some choices given to people. Um, and then we can see those choices. And then, again, there is a little bit of code here. And this will give people choices in what they do. So what I can do now, and we can see here there's a whole um, structure to it. Uh, this is the end of the game. So once you've done everything, um, all of the choices you made are acknowledged. So you can see if you did this and this, um, you'll get these things acknowledged at the end of your game. And there is also a factor where I can change certain things about it. Um, if this intimidates you, you absolutely do not have to use it. Um, you can absolutely just leave everything alone. As it is, I just copy this off someone else and put my preferred things in it. So what I will do is hide this. Sorry, Tegan. Um, That's all right. <laughs> so this is the viewers at home. Okay, so this is what the game actually looks like. So this has been uploaded to the Itch website and you can play that yourself on your own time. And so we press start and we go into the opening. So you can choose where you would like to go on a date. And you can absolutely choose to stay home if you, that's what you would like to do. So let's do that. And um, whilst we do discuss the option of nudity, um, you, you, know, you have the options of dressing how you want and whatever you choose, you'll be affirmed in your choice. So let's go glam. And do you want to eat food? Or, okay, so we can cook at home if we want. And, yeah, so so you make yourself up and you get on with it and you start making stuff. And in this case, you can actually chat about stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. this is circular. You can just um, in this here, obviously, with this is quite short, and then we can see that um, it acknowledges that that's what you did. So yeah, um, that's a very very simple one. It should be fairly non intimidating for um, people who aren't coders, um, and you can ab absolutely just directly just go wherever you want to go. Um, it's not the most literary, I freely admit. Uh, it's actually, pretty middle middlebrow. Um, I do have examples of more fairly literary games. No, I really, I really like how contained that game is. It's very um, sweet and nice. It's very short. It's only got about 2,500 words. Um, but from those 2,500 words, you get quite a lot of unique outcomes. Now, I think we might have lost Tegan, so I'll give her some time to... Um, Tegan, you're dropping out. Is your connection okay? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be fine. I don't know what happened there. Uh, can you see me now? Yes, yes, you could. Okay, go on. My internet connection is usually fine. But, of course, today it's being weird because I have to do a thing. But, yeah, we'll just keep going. As it is. Yeah, so, sorry, what were you saying? Um, no, I was just saying you dropped out. You were about to say something. Oh, okay. Oh, I just, yeah, I just really liked how contained it is. And also how, because you're kind of using those kind of, I guess, classic like text adventures type yep. um, things, but for something that's really personal and um, kind of like an everyday, well, not like an everyday problem, but like something that's very relatable to a lot of people. 
Um, yeah. I really like games like that. Yeah. That it's it's cozy. Sorry? In gaming, we call them cozy games. Cozy games. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Yes, I love yeah. cozy games. <laughs> Um, great. All right. Well, I might. Do you want me to take? Uh, yeah, one too. I am intrigued and terrified. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I didn't know the thing about the everyone losing their work from Twine Two. Uh, that hasn't happened to me yet. But uh, <laughs> we'll see. Um, I guess it's. I'll just have to keep saving my work. Um, all right. So if we go to share. All right, have we got yes, we have there, and we have excellent. A giant yeah, <laughs> just giving you some back. Um, all right, so this is basically what Twine Two looks like when you start. Um, and this is like you, I've named my piece down here. Um, but yeah, you'll start with a uh, one kind of uh, passage here, um, and. The thing with this is you just um, you can change your story format with Twine to you can change between quite a lot of these and that can get you in a little bit of trouble if you're using it's it's fine if you're just using um, simple like choice based things with the double square brackets so let's say like um, you are in a room go through red door go through Green door. <laughs> Very simple. Um, so to make these into links, all you need to do is the two square brackets there. Uh, I feel I should point out for people who <laughs> um, may be contemplating what they want to do, um, mm. in Twine 1 you would actually have to, um, you'd actually have to have a, a name separate from the, um, it's probably easier if I show you. Yeah, sure. I'll get out. And... No, 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 no. I won't screen share. But basically, instead okay. of red door, you would actually have to type red door pipe red door. But the good thing about oh, that okay. is that you can name you can name the um, passage something completely different to yep. what the text shows. Um, yeah. In Twine too, you just haven't chosen to do it, um, and that can be very, very useful for if you want to hide certain things from the reader whatever that might be. Like maybe you've labelled it monster room because you know it's the room with the monster. Yeah. Um, but they don't need to know that. They just see red door and they go through it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, you can't. Yeah, that's that's a good point to make. Yeah, it can be this one. A lot of things do happen quite automatically, but then if, like you said, if you want to keep things secret or if you want to change things, there is a little bit of like extra stuff you have to do. So like yeah. you said, if I wanted to name it something else, I could say this is I just put the this kind of yep uh, thing here. It's above the backslash. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, a pipe as in thingy smoke. Yeah, ah, oh, great. There you go. So there we can go like monster room and like um cheese room. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so oh I've done it the wrong way around, but you'll see. So yep. like you've labeled it those two things. But it's still called Red Door if you go. Yeah. Is that because you put breaks in it? Okay, let's see what happens. There you go. Yeah. Oh. So it'll go to Red Door like that. Yep. Yeah. So um, that's kind of if you're wanting to change in between story formats, you can do that now if you want to do, because this is what Sugar Cube looks like. Hello is a bit different. It's a bit larger and a bit more. There's no kind of menu on the side. That's what it looks like there. But um, yeah, I choose Sugar Cube just because I know how it works. <laughs> like Maybe I know. Test with Twine Two. Sorry, what was that? How do you go using cascading style sheets with Twine Two? Um, so your style sheet is actually here. Yep in here um and so this is where you put all your like css stuff um in in this kind of like separate little bit here yep. uh if you want to make if you want to change um like make different passages different colors like i can show you and like do different things per passage you can use um tags yep so i'll show you 
this is forgive my messy messy cool no but you've got that lovely black color and then pink bright pink links yeah yeah so it, it does it does colors for you which is quite nice mm. <laughs> um to kind of keep you let your head get wrapped around um the separate stuff but this it's a little bit um scary i guess for um but basically what you would do oops to um so to make say this Ooh. one's teal so i would just put the teal tag there and then this teal tag the code is here teal yep. Yep. um yeah that this i used i used a basically a forum post to teach me how to do this yes. um <laughs> yeah exactly so this was i was basically just googled how do I make one passage different color from another passage? And I found this and um, the best part is that yeah, no matter like, how long you've been doing it, you're always going to be Googling, how do I do this thing? Totally. Oh yeah, totally. I forget things and then I have to Google them again. And like, yeah, you're what you'll always be looking for stuff, but that's kind of the fun. I kind of find as part of like, because because the initial coding stuff is so um is quite accessible um yep. it's kind of like i get it kind of like piecing puzzles together and going and looking for stuff and and kind of building the game itself is kind of like a game to me in itself yeah. if that no i know i agree i find that as well um yeah can i ask you because i i'm a little bit worried that we may, may be getting a bit intimidating to people who yeah. are writers how do you how do you plan out your story because i mean uh, young spells is reasonably long um yeah. and it seems just looking at your screen here that seems really quite detailed um and even my mm -hmm. little game had quite a lot of nodes how did mm -hmm. you go about planning out what you wanted young spell what its structure would be what would be in it did you yeah so um here I'll, I'll so i um at, at the first at first i kind of just went i do what i do with most of my writing is i just kind of go and see where it takes me kind of thing um but of course with something like this um there is an there is an element of planning that you need particularly for me i find that i will gravitate i'll start gravitate i'll find a path that i like yep. i'll start gravitating towards that as being my favorite one um, and then I'll put a lot of effort into that and then the kind of the other paths kind of are a little bit lacklustre um, and and sad and, and um, hang on, I'll just get out of this. Yep. Yeah, a little bit lacklustre and sad and um, uh, don't have the same quality or kind of pull towards them as the others and then that can be problematic as well because then because re readers can kind of readers can kind of tell I think when you're leading them a certain way yeah. um and I want it to be I want to try I try my best to make it balanced so yeah. I think the way that I work at this point because I'm still learning so I'm yeah. this is probably not like the most practical or useful way but like start um um working on it have some options um right through to the end and then kind of step back and look okay where have i um where am i trying like accidentally trying to lead people where do i need to kind of flesh out the other stuff how can i kind of make it balanced but not um but still make it feel like uh the player has choice mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of how i approach it it's kind of like <laughs> as a kind of weird metaphor i suppose like you know you have all these ingredients for food the ingredients are different you're trying to like eat to get full it doesn't matter what you eat as long as by the end of it you're full i guess is if that makes sense tegan are you familiar with the terms plotter and pantser no what does that mean <laughs> okay so it's a term writers use amongst themselves a plotter is somebody like me who will carefully plot out everything they've got a world building document they've got biographies of the smallest character in the story um whereas you're a pants so you write by the seat of your pants um and enjoy just letting the words flow onto the page and run where they will fly my pretties 
And so the thing is, if you are a natural pantser, um, I feel like twine can still be valuable. Like my first twine game was absolutely pantsed. I just typed stupid shit into the screen and just went, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we did this? Um, and wouldn't it be funny if we played Monopoly and then we all stabbed each other to death? That's the bad ending. Um, yeah. Whereas with Dancing With Myself, I because it was for a game jam and it was quite planned, I literally sat down and went not only, okay, what kind of things do I enjoy doing to pamper myself, but also okay, what sort of activities would I want to include? Am I targeting an audience? And I actually deliberately tried not to make the activities to stereotypically feminine um i know because when you hear self-care i immediately imagine cucumbers on the eyes yeah um, right so I want to include things which regardless of whether you regard yourself as mask or fam or whatever um you could potentially still enjoy them um it is biased in favor of dogs i'm afraid i'm sorry <laughs> um and the point is i plotted all that stuff out before i ever started typing into twine and it really does lower your stress quite a bit yeah for sure i mean it's probably something that i will work on further as i do more <laughs> twine stuff um yeah i think yeah i think my next project i'm gonna try and try some more different interesting macros and i'm also gonna try and see if i can plan it all out before i start writing it it's like a challenge for myself um yeah it's 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 an ongoing process i guess <laughs> Would you like to walk us through young spells so actually play it on screen? yeah sure yeah, yeah yeah sure i'll do a bit and i'll take you yeah i'll do a bit and i'll take you to my favorite part because that has more cycling links and i love talking about them so <laughs> um all right let's go back to young spells over here all right, so basically the premise of this game is that you are two uh, young teenage girls who are uh, casting a spell in your bedroom and um, you're trying to see into your future. So um, uh, the idea is that you go through uh, these two characters um, kind of time, you go along their timeline. So you go into the past, into their like memories, but also into the into like future um, experiences and interactions in their relationship and you're basically looking for ingredients uh that will give them at the end a kind of glimpse into what their future looks like so it's very kind of abstract and 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 um i guess uh feelings heavy i suppose <laughs> um yeah lots of like yeah i'm very interested in like kind of intimate moments and female friendship and and um, sorry what was that we can decide here what kind of lip gloss we are wearing you've got yeah 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 so yeah this is the kind of so these are the cycling links um so you can just kind of choose whichever kind of lip, lip gloss that you would like um the idea is that there are a number of different links um throughout the passages some of them take you to uh the next one some of you some of them are just that cycle through yeah. options so you can just choose like small character moments or world building things um and some of them so like in this instance um the thing you get to decide what uh the protagonist's fingernails look like and that kind of gives you an idea like if they bite them you know are they a nervous person that kind of thing yeah yep pink yep. black they're a bit goth <laughs> okay, cool. yeah that kind um, of stuff <laughs> i'm super girly yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then there'll be um, these kind of options here where you, so basically this, you're going into a memory here, so you have to choose which one you would like to go into. I'm going to uh, choose this one. Um, and so this one's actually kind of moving forward from their uh, timeline um, to when they're a little bit older. Um, and so we've got, uh, another cycling link here. We've also got this one that takes you to the next passage. We've got this one here. If you click on that, that kind of that um, indicates that you found 
an ingredient that you're looking for mm -hmm. um a, kind of playing off the I guess like the text adventure things of like you go in here you find this key that kind of stuff yep um but it's kind of like important like mementos to them so some of them are like like that one was drumsticks some of them are like there's like butterfly wings and like um lots of like different kind of small things that mean stuff to them um that they will end up kind of sacrificing i guess for the for the spell um and so you move through uh the the kind of game in that way kind of exploring and clicking on things this you get to choose which paste you will would like yeah that kind of stuff yep um yeah and it's like the idea is that um depending on where you go you find different um ingredients there's no kind of right or wrong combination of ingredients it just de determines what you're going to see yep at the end um like what there was at some places there'll be gaps and some places there won't um so yeah that's kind of how it works i'll take you maybe i can uh, we'll just kind of skip forward and it's kind of in two acts so the first there's the first the first act and and there's this kind of middle bit and then there's the second act and then there's the kind of bringing the ingredients together for the spell at the end and here we go this is the one that i wanted to go to because there's uh here we go so um this because i kind this is kind of my favorite bit of the whole game and uses uh the cycling links um in that kind of way that i was talking about before with the um kind of sitting and recontextualizing and thinking about character and um the world in the in the game um uh and basically what i wanted to convey with this was um i guess when you're tegan you're dropping out girls or young people kind of yep and what motivated you to write young spells okay tegan is having some internet issues but you can see how um you can go into quite a bit of detail in a quite literary story for self-expression um Have we got Tegan? Hello. Hey, excellent. Right, sorry. Oh, that was really cool. that was... How, how did you how did you do the um, things? The what? Sorry. Versus the little wand effects and the little heart. Oh, the curses! Yeah, that was just. Um, I just went onto a website uh, that uh, had the free cur you like that you would do when you were like a younger the curses. Um, uh that you would like use for your website i think it's called curses for you or something like that <laughs> and um that was kind of, yeah, yeah yeah it was it was another kind of css thing like the similar way that you use the um you change the colors you can put those cursor kind of css code in there i'll show you hang on where it is um <laughs> let's go back to screen share uh young spells so where are we so it's all in the css stuff here okay okay yeah so they're down here yeah so the right. so it was the tag and then i've got the little code in there um oh, and wow. that kind of changes um the curses oh, wow. yeah 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 that was kind of just like a CSS experiment that I was doing, um, just using kind of free open source stuff. Um, cool. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was kind of. Did did you get most of that? What I was talking yeah, about? Yeah, you only dropped out towards the end, thankfully. Okay. 
Cool. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So, so yeah, the cycling that. links, um, those cycling links. Uh, yes, I am back. I'm going to try. Did you want to go through some of the games that you like, and I'll try and sort out what's going on here? I think I will. All right. So I'm going to take the viewers through um, some games that I think are top examples of twine. And obviously, I don't mean just man. So this is Enthamima. This is the thing that inspired Tegan to get into twine. So um, different options. Very clever. Um, so... So this game is inviting you to write on yourself. I've played through this and didn't. I just literally carried it in my memory. Um, and so um, Elena in particular does work around, amongst other things, mental health. So I like to do a bit of sleeping before I do this. Breakfast. Uh, well, I haven't had breakfast, so... Okay, so do you like what you see? Uh, I'm going to go no because I think this is aimed at people who don't like what they see. Imagine a symbol that represents what you see. Draw the symbol on your skin. So I'm going to allow you at home to draw that if that's what you want to do. Coffee, we always need coffee. Um, this is an interesting one for me because it says, would you like to make a difference today? And me being a hopeless do-gooder chose yes. And it says, I am unhappy with all of these things. So here's your links. Now, um, I believe this does remember your choice and mention it. So I am going to go with house and see what happens because I actually haven't tried that one. Design a symbol to represent these feelings. Draw it on your skin. I actually really like my house, so this is, um, I'll say yes for this. You tr And you've got, again, choices here, walking, car, train, bus, tram, bike, skateboard. We'll go. Uh, um, I'm going to go invigorated. We'll be positive today. Um, if we are going with choices, most of them are small, some of them are significant. Uh, ignore, rise up to. So you've got two negative choices and a positive choice. Um, you can be scared or excited here. So you must pay the ransom. What's holding you back? My distrust, my comfort, my self-esteem, my routine, my uncertainty. Let's go with that. Think about why you accept your uncertainty, even though it holds you back. Design a symbol that represents this part of you. Draw it on your skin. Inhale. Exhale. Draw a line through the symbol. Eliminate that which blocks your way. Dinner, yes, because I'm probably starving by now. Yes. And I'm going to give this a happy ending. Um, I'm proud of you. So, yeah, um, we can earn Elena's approval and work through our problems. So, yeah, um, it's a really you know, affirming game potentially um, and can help you think through some stuff. Now, Tegan, are you back? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think I, I've switched. Or have I nicked your game? No, no, no. <laughs> You've nicked one of my games. No, no, no. I really love that game as well. Um, yeah, I like how embodied you are when you're playing that game. I guess we're having to the, the drawing and the self reflection, that kind of stuff. I really, really like that game a lot. Um, yeah, I've got one too. I wanted to actually show um, something that's not actually 
a game. There's the uh, review uh, by, uh, it's a book review actually, by uh, Gemma Mahadio. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's done a really great, um, hang on, let me, sorry, it's your face. There we go. Um, she's done a really lovely book review um, of uh, Vanessa Berry's uh, Mirror Sydney um, using twine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this was published in Plumwood Mountain. Um, it's an eco poetic review of Vanessa Berry's book. And it, um, uh, she d uses a lot of links to kind of describe like her intentions as to how she was approaching it and also relating to herself uh, as well, her own experiences. There was a really beautiful line that I wanted to share um, in it that's like, um, here we go. My aim is to eventually review and rewrite and reimagine each chapter in the method I'll outline below. I also love the possibilities of this software called Twine to tell queer decolonized intersectional disabled perspectives because it is a very tangible way to tell narratives that do not follow linear trajectories. Um, and then she goes on uh, to use the different uh, compass points as well. It's a really beautiful um, review. This is amazing. And <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And I really wanted to, and it really kind of um, shows the possibilities of, of Twine. It doesn't have to be, it can be whatever. You can use it as a, as a template for anything you want to make. Yeah. Um, as yeah. long as, yeah, once, once you get your head around the first initial stuff, you can, yeah, people are doing book reviews. I know people do like, I, I built my website using Twine. Yeah. <laughs> like um, <laughs> people, you can use it for all kinds of different things. Um, cool. Yeah, so that's kind of what I wanted to show off. There's a whole list of games I popped um, on that, on, the, on a slide for us to um, share with everyone. There's a whole list of games. I know you mentioned Sav Ferguson's game. Yeah. yeah award-winning twine game. <laughs> cool. Do you have the slide for us? Yeah, sure. I'll show you. Um, it's got some re resources and, uh, oh, hang on. I've got to do the screen share first. That would help, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, so it's got some resources and some games for us here. So, this is kind of the stuff that we were talking about and we can I can share this on Twitter as well so if yep. anyone has any questions oh yeah you can access all the links so these are this is a great tutorial for twine too um, there's also YouTube if you work better with being stuff shown to you I guess <laughs> um, and um, and then this is a twine one that you mentioned uh, for twine for twine one is that it? a really good simple introduction um, right. That one's an introduction to 1.4, um, but yeah, um, it's it's very easy to understand, very easy to just dip your toes, and then yeah. when you're feeling confident, you can move on to more complex things. Then, great, um, yeah, that's really handy. And yeah, this is um, this stuff here is basically where I find my. So this is where I got my cycling link open source code from from Glorious Trainwrecks. Um, there's whole macro libraries um, where you can do different things cool. um, with your links and things like that here for Halo and for Sugarcube. That this covers most of the inbuilt stuff, so the stuff that's already built into the game, and you just kind of have to uh, write out those little instructions. Um, so that's really helpful. And then here's a list of games that we like that are good and yes. clever. I played Cat Simulator last night and I'm obsessed with it. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> How many things have you been able to break? Um, I think I got up to like seven or eight maybe. Yeah, um, my best score is about seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, yeah, it's it, it's it's almost painfully accurate. <laughs> I am a, I'm a cat owner and I'm, all these things are like, yeah, my yes. cat's done that. Yeah, my cat's done that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to find that Emma Kid game because that looks amazing. Ah, here we go. Uh, Emma Kidwell? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's I've got it up here if you want to have a look at it. Cool. So it's basically just, um, yeah, <laughs> a, a game that um, basically you are 
you need to go out and buy condoms from a supermarket and you need to do it as least awkwardly as possible um and with each aw awkward interaction this little guy deflates <laughs> oh, wow. um yeah it's 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 very silly and cute and i i quite like it a lot cool um, yeah do you have any questions um yeah um Tegan and I are both on Twitter, so I would absolutely encourage all of you to approach us with questions. My handle is at ms45. Um, nice, short, easy to remember. Um, Tegan? Yeah, uh, I am uh, Toriholic23, uh, T-R-I-H-O-L-I-C 23. Um, and yeah, if, you, if there's anything that um, you see in any of my stuff and you're like, how do you do that? Just ask me, please approach me. Like, um, yeah, I'm still learning. All this stuff is like, I, yeah, none, none, well, I can't speak for everyone, but none, none myself. And I don't think you either are kind of gatekeeping any of this information. We want it to be like free and available yeah, wow. with Twine because it's super great and we both love it. Yeah. Um, Tegan, a lot of the, the links that we have shared today have been very technical, like how do you do this, how do you make the links cycle, how do you um, set a variable. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen any um, more literary advice around Twine? Um, I, I don't know that I've seen much in terms of how it informs story construction or how it, whether it's an effect or... Like that Gemma Mahadio thing talked briefly about decolonization, but it does it's not an instructional piece. It's quite yeah. about Vanessa Berry's stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's I think this is quite a again, I'm still quite new, so there may be a whole bunch of stuff that I'm just not aware of, but um I think it's quite a um emergent thing still, maybe, mm. that people are realizing that they can use this um for their own practice um i mean i've been thinking a lot like I, i've been banging on about like the cycling links and stuff and thinking a lot about how different mechanics inform the storytelling and how you work with them to tell the stories um as opposed to like using them as a kind of a vehicle to tell the story you actually work with them and with the mechanics um to and let that inform the way you construct your stories. I mean, it's, yeah, something that I'm very interested in and very clean to explore further. I don't know if I have any fully formed thoughts or opinions on it just yet um, or anywhere to point to, but I really hope that more people get involved and we start having these, like, conversations like what Gemma is, has, has yeah. brought up um, about how Twine can, particularly around, like, nonlinear narratives yeah. um, and kind of deconstructing this way that we... Like there's lots of stuff out there about non-linear storytelling and how like the linear mode of storytelling, um, you know, has been informed by a whole bunch of things. Um, and there are real benefits to like society, to breaking that apart and looking at different ways that are, you know, non-white colonised storytelling modes, that kind of stuff. Um, I have to admit, it's sort of strange to remember that novels are only about 300 years old as a, as an art form. So Twine was created yeah. about eight years ago. So, yeah, we... we yeah, exactly. We're, we're <laughs> yeah, I really hope, like, you know, 15 years from now there's, like, oh. you know, whole, like, university subjects being taught on this kind of stuff. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that most Twines are fairly short. They tend... I have played twines which were quite long and detailed, but they mostly are over in about five minutes, maybe 15 if it's ambitious. Tegan, you there? All right. Um, looks like Tegan's um, internet connection has is cursed. Um, so we'll wrap that up here. Thank you so much for joining us. And as I said, 
if you've got any questions whatsoever, come onto Twitter and um, enter the hashtag, or and you're more than welcome to at myself or Tegan directly. You're back now, Tegan. I'm just saying. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying it's probably best that we wrap up now anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, thank you so much for fighting through your cursed internet connection. It's been really informative. I'm certainly very inspired. Yeah, sorry. And I really loved Young Spells. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Trying to see what you do. Thank you. Cool. All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, thank you.